as has been the theme so far throughout this topic, this is stuff that you know, but I want to refit together all this knowledge you've sort of amassed over the last few years, put it into a, um, I guess you'd say a scheme that, that makes everything fit together, and also highlight some things that maybe you haven't thought about before, okay? So here's the first thing I wanna do. You know lots of quadrilaterals. You know lots of different kinds of special quadrilaterals. One of the things you might not have thought about before is that they're related together in a non-trivial way. Like the relationships between these shapes help you understand the shapes a little bit better. So right at the top here, I'm gonna draw what we call like a family tree. All quadrilaterals are related to each other in some way. So if you take a sort of any quadrilateral, right, which has no special properties about it, um, I'm gonna add on properties to this shape and I'm going to make the shape more and more specialized, right? So probably one of the least special quadrilaterals that you know about is the trapezium. It's the least special in that um, a trapezium can still be a really random looking shape. And when you don't, like quadrilateral and geometric proofs don't often relate to trapeziums because there aren't that many special properties in them. In fact, there's basically only one. What kind of property makes a trapezium a trapezium? Two parallel sides. One pair, one pair of parallel sides. Uh, I do want to point out, <coughs> excuse me, that you can add more to this and it's still a trapezium, right? So as I go down uh, the, the diagram, right, I'm going to add more properties and everything lower down has all of the properties of the things above it. So for example, everything that's true about a quadrilateral is also true about a trapezium because a trapezium is a kind of quadrilateral. So for example, there are many things that you know about a quadrilateral. Um, angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees because of course, no matter what kind of quadrilateral it is, you can fit two, oh, you get the idea, you can fit two triangles in it, each of which has an angle sum of 180, and so that's why the total angle sum is 360, right? So this is still true of a trapezium because it has all the properties here plus this extra bit, okay? So you add one pair of parallel sides, that's what you get. What happens if you add another pair of parallel sides? Think carefully. If all you add is one other pair of parallel sides, then your trapezium has to turn into a parallelogram, right? Um, it may well turn into a square, but it would have to have been a pretty special trapezium in order to do that. So I'm just going to call this right now a parallelogram, okay? Now, from here, there's two different directions we can go in. Kind of cool. You've got a parallelogram, which has all of the features of the previous shapes. By the way, a parallelogram is a special kind of trapezium. Uh, a trapezium can have at least one pair of parallel sides. You can have two if you wanted to. Okay. At the moment, at this point, I have two pairs of parallel sides. So what other kinds of special properties could I add to this? What else would you like to tell me about, say, sides? Yeah. Okay, so I could add one pair of equal sides. But here's the thing, you kind of already had a pair of equal sides when you had the two pairs of parallel sides. Think about it, right? And I'm gonna come back to this in a second. If you've got a parallelogram, picture a parallelogram, any parallelogram you like, right? It already has a pair of equal sides here and a pair of equal sides here, right? So in fact, to add one pair of equal sides, you've already got those. What you're really th uh, thinking of is two pairs of equal sides that are equal to each other. What does that mean? If they're all equal to each other, what kind of shape do I have? This is a rhombus, isn't it? So if these two pairs of equal sides that I had before uh, now equal each other, now all the sides are equal to each other. That's what makes it a rhombus, okay? You wanna add some properties to this before we come over here? You wanna make the, this shape more special? There's only one more to go. 
What could you do to a rhombus to make it even more special than it already is? Yeah. Okay, so we've got equal sides, but if I make all the angles equal as well, equal angles, then remembering that the angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360, if they're all equal, then they're all equal to 90. So what's our shape? It's a square. Okay, now there's this gap over here. There's something in here. From a parallelogram, you can do more than just getting equal sides, right? You could do the angles first, right? So if you take a parallelogram and you make all of its angles equal, what's a parallelogram where all the angles are the same? That's a rectangle. All the angles are right angles, which in fact is what rectangle means. It means right angle. Like rectify, you make something right. How do you get from a rectangle to a square? What do you add? Yeah, it's the equal sides thing that we were talking about before. Okay, now we're almost done. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll notice I had like this gap over on the left. I deliberately, um, yeah, the order we did it in was a bit funny, but anyway. I deliberately left this gap over here because there's one shape we haven't named yet. The kite. The kite. Now, you don't get to the kite by taking a trapezium and adding features to it, okay? So that's why I'm going to put this guy off on the side. Kite. What makes a kite special? What do you do with a kite to make it different? What's it got? Ah, I'll come to the diagonals in a minute. Um, we will talk about diagonals, but usually what's referred to, like the thing that makes it look like a kite, is that you've got a pair of equal sides here, and also a pair of equal sides here. Okay? So I guess it's something like this, but it doesn't have all of the parallelness that I've um, added as I went down this track. Okay? So two pairs of equal sides. Okay? Which means that there's actually a funny relationship between the kite and the other shape which has these pairs of equal sides, the rhombus. Okay? Um, namely, what Xiang just mentioned, if you draw yourself a kite, can you draw a little kite off on the side here, maybe next to your spot in the diagram where it says kite? If you draw its diagonals, what you'll find is that they're perpendicular. They have to be. Okay? The first time that this occurs on the rest of the diagram is where I said there was this weird link, the rhombus. So if you draw yourself a rhombus, you will notice, again, if you've drawn a decent rhombus, then you get these perpendicular diagonals. Which, by the way, is why the formula for area, which is what comes after all of this, the formula for area of a kite is the same as the formula of the area of a rhombus. They're the same formula half xy, where x and y are your diagonals, and half xy. Sometimes they're written as half ab, which sort of disguises the fact that they're the same formula, but that's frustrating. It comes from these properties being the same. Okay, Okay. so that's all just to remind you of what all these shapes are. I want to make one final comment as you get into these proofs, which is just to distinguish between these two things, properties and sufficiency conditions. Properties are features of a shape. So we've named a whole bunch of them here. See these, right? It's like, oh, what makes a, um, a rhombus a rhombus? One of the things, it's got all equal sides. Okay, that's one of its properties. Okay. That also happens to be one of its sufficiency conditions. So if you have a shape and you don't know what it is, but you prove that all of its sides are equal, then that is sufficient as a condition to say, this must be a rhombus, can't be anything else. Uh, it can't be um, just a trapezium, it has to be more special than that because you've proven all of these extra things. Okay? But properties and sufficiency conditions are not the same thing. For example, here's um, just a counter example for you, right? A square has all angles equal to 90 degrees, right? So if you're given a square and a question, and you want to do something with its angles, you can state that, right? You can pick out any of its angles and say, this must be 90 degrees. Reason, I am appealing to this property of a square. This is true. OK? 
Okay, so this is a property. But this is not a sufficiency condition for a square. Think about it. If you have a shape and you don't know what it is, and you prove that all its angles are 90 degrees, you haven't, that's not enough. That's not sufficient to prove that it's a square. Do you see that? I don't know enough yet. What have I proven if all the angles are 90 degrees? I've proven that it's a rectangle because that's part of the essential nature of that shape. Okay, so I guess I would say, but this is not a sufficiency condition. Or a square. Okay? Um, this one that I was referring to just now, right? The fact that sometimes you get a quadrilateral and its diagonals are perpendicular. They're, that's really cool because we've saw that, seen that in coordinate geometry. It's a really quick way to get to something because you don't have to worry about four sides. You just worry about these two and that's quite convenient often. Okay? If I had a shape and I didn't know what it was and I proved that its diagonals were perpendicular, I proved that its diagonals were perpendicular. What's that a sufficiency condition for? Is that sufficient to show that it's a rhombus? It's not, even though it's a property of a rhombus. It's only sufficient to show that it's a kite. Does that make sense? Hmm. OK, so I'm going to pause there. I just need to make sure that you have this distinction, because people often don't get that they're different things. Um, and you should be right to have a go at these two exercises. Should you also have to prove that it doesn't have parallel sides? No, because a rhombus is a special kind of kite. So that's why I drew this sort of funny, funky arrow going through here. Um, so in a similar way, if you wanted to prove that something was a trapezium, you don't have to prove, in fact, you can't prove. Um, really, there's one pair of, pair of parallel sides, but not a second pair. That's OK. You can have a second pair, and it's still a trapezium. It just is also a parallelogram at the same time. OK? Yes. A square is just a really, really special kind of trapezium, just like a square is a really, really special kind of quadrilateral. OK? So let me just restate, because again, the nuance is, is tricky. A property is a quality, an attribute, a feature that a shape has. All squares have all angles that add up to 90 degrees. But a sufficiency condition is a little more special than that. It means that if you know this about a shape, it must be uh, a square, or it must be a rectangle, etc. Right? So it's not sufficient to prove that something has all angles 90 degrees, therefore it's a square, because it still might be something else. Does that make sense?